Uh, some of you who are born again and, and know you're born again, see, you'll know that you know that you know when you are, and, and when you're not sure, well, then you probably aren't. You might be, but, but you probably aren't. And, and, and some of you are what we call a point-in-time Christian. Now, a point-in-time Christian is, is a person, you might not remember the exact date, but you remember the circumstance. You remember, maybe it was the Believer's Edge meeting. Maybe, maybe it was kneeling by your bed with your grandma or your grandpa, and you asked Christ into your life. Or maybe it was at camp. Or maybe it was in front of television. You know, a friend did a Billy Graham thing once, and he got saved on TV. And some of you, most of you, uh, over the years, about two-thirds of you who know Christ are point-in-time Christians. You remember the circumstance. Uh, for those of you who are, who are born again, who are point-in-time, just raise your hand for me. Just a little raise your hand. That uh, Yeah, I'm a point-in-time guy. All right. Now, here's the problem with being a point-in-time guy. Uh, there, there are lots of you. There, there are more of you than our process Christians. I'll explain that in a minute. But you want process Christians to have a time, date, and the place. And why is it you want that? Well, that's the way you got saved, so you want to make sure they got saved so that you can be sure they're in. As if you're the fruit inspector here. <laughs> yeah. And so we make life really tough on processed Christians. Now, a processed Christian is a person who will acknowledge that at some point in time they were born again, but they're not exactly sure when that was. All they know is that right now they know that they know that they know. They're just not sure when it happened. Now, now if that's you, if you're a processed Christian, raise your hand for me. Yeah, see, there's just a smattering of you. Yeah, and you've been under pressure by the point-in-time people for years. Yeah. Now, now, we don't know whose hand didn't go up for either one of those, but, but you need to be thinking about the things we're saying here this morning because you must be born again. Well, Nicodemus, <laughs> he, he's not Pharisee Nicodemus. He's not... Member of the Sanhedrin, Nicodemus. He's not Judge Nicodemus. He's not your honor, Nicodemus. Right about now, he's just Nick, you know, because Jesus is reducing him. And that's still a, too, a little too uppity for Jesus because he's only going to be satisfied with Nicky. <laughs> so so he, he starts reducing him. What? Uh, you're the teacher, Israel. You don't understand these things. Uh, I'm telling you the truth. You're not listening to me. Uh, I'm telling you the basics. How are you ever going to believe the more complicated things? I, I've been to heaven and back. I know what I'm talking about here. I'm God. And then this one. What do you do with this one? I mean, right out of left field, this one. As Moses lifted the serpent in the wilderness, so, the, so must the Son of Man be lifted, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. Well, here we go. This is your basic snake. I've used this snake for 30 years. It's tired. His tail broke off. It used to curl this way. It used to look like a mustache. <laughs> you must pay the rent. I can't pay the rent. I'll pay the rent. My, my hero. Curses foiled again. Now, if you're old enough to know who said that, you're really old. That comes from Mighty Mouse and Oil Can Harry. Yeah, I don't use it with kids anymore. I don't even know who Mighty Mouse is. Numbers 21. 
Every time the children of Israel messed up, God would lay a heavy on them to get their attention. And they grumbled about the food, so God laid a real big heavy on them, sent some little red snakes to bite them. Every time a little red snake bit somebody, they'd die. They said, oh, Moses, this is the heaviest heavy God's ever laid on us. Go, go pray like crazy and ask God to lighten up. So Moses prays, pray, pray, pray. Pray, pray, pray. Yes, Lord. Really? <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, I got it. I'll tell him. Okay. People, called all the people himself. I got some good news. I got some bad news. First, the bad news, God's not getting rid of the snakes. I know we asked him to, but every time we get rid of the snakes, we stop trusting in God. He's going to keep the snakes because the snakes are going to drive us to him. So, Here's the good news. He told him to make a bronze stick, put a snake on it, made of gold, and, and then anytime anybody's bitten by a snake, if you look at the snake on the stick, you won't die. He's given us a really good snake bite kit, but he's not getting rid of the snakes. There were four responses. First guy's bitten by a snake. Ah, oh. Ah, snake got me. Hate it when that happens. Let's say everybody's bitten by a snake. They die. Uh, Tell them I'm busy. (laughs) Every time someone's bitten by a snake, they die. Now, God wants me to look at the snake on the stick, but I don't want to do what God tells me to do. I, I really don't. I... I think that I can well up the powers that are within me and I can drive the venom from my system. He died. Uh, the second guy, bitten by a snake. Oh, ah, snake got me. Oh, yugga, mugga, that hurts. Oh, man. Now God wants me to look at the snake, but I... Ah, That's so narrow to think that there's only one way to solve the problem of snake bite. There must be multiple ways to solve the problem of snake bite. I think I'll invest in a Hare Krishna snake bite kit and see how that works. He died. Third person said, yikes, there's snakes around here. And I take off over the hill there, see, and he he gets a couple hills away and a snake bit him. Oh, because there's snakes out there. And he turned and looked for the snake on the stick. There was a hill between him and camp. He couldn't see it, and he... Yeah, that's what happened. But there was the fourth person, bitten by a snake. Ah! Snake got me. Let's see. Snake. What kind of snake is that? It's a red snake. (laughs) And he looked at the snake on the stick, And he didn't die. He did it the way God said to do it. And Jesus, who is God, said, you must be born again. 